My name is Kelsey Egan. I'm the writer, director, producer of Gargoyle. And I'm Jessica Kay, a producer and the lead actress. And action! I played uh, Temba Mabalani. He's um, Vuyo's older brother. We ended up casting the actual Vio in the part of Vio. I've never acted before. He's a, you know, a little precocious 12-year-old, and Kelsey tracked him down because he moved from the neighborhood and found, found him again, and then we ended up casting him as Vio. It's a 24-minute short film. We have an older brother in his early 20s, and the younger brother is about 12 years old, and the premise is that the parents are out of the picture. Temba makes the decision, I'm getting out of the township, so I'm gonna move someplace a little more upscale in the city of Johannesburg. So I qualify to be in the school district to send my baby brother Rio to, so he can get this education that I think he needs. It's challenging and it's exciting to, to, to play a, a character such as Temba, having to be a role model to Vuyo, but at the same time he's going through his own issues. Seeing the frustration and the, and the anger that he, he has for his own life and starts taking out on the little kid. It's pretty much the unfortunate great picture of what we see in society, not only in South Africa, but in Africa as a whole. The director took a very subtle approach, not to be graphic, but to have the principal understanding of what happens here in South Africa. Mali. 1,000 rand. Yo, yo, yo. I think it's only natural for a first-time director to be really hands-on with everything. Shooting went really well. Um, I, I think I, I like the shots and you know just the technical flow of the entire, the entire time we're there. I really thought that this was a, a nice story to tell. It can make a positive impact to, to the young, you know, young people out there. I was like, I'm more than willing to be a part of it. We were so lucky. Every single member of our crew came to the party on this job. Mike Lacus was our director of photography and he flew in from Los Angeles and he was amazing. First time directing is hard and it's risky and I wanted someone that I knew I could trust but I also knew would trust me. So he came out and lent his time and I'm so grateful that he did. Mike Lacus. Ina Browder, you never realize what amazing friends you have until you try to make a movie. Nick Kroll came on board as an executive producer and obviously that moment when that email came in was one of the best because that's, that's when we knew we could make the film. I think the other thing that's really exciting about our partnership with the National Institute for Crime Prevention and the Reintegration of Offenders is we're donating the film to their programs. That, that's really meaningful to me that we're executive produced by Negro and that we're giving the film back to them to use, to be shown in the reintegration programs and prevention programs that Negro runs all over the country to show how crime affects everyone. How it, it's not just a matter of, oh, you hurt one person when you steal their thing, but also what it does to you inside. One of the things that was particularly exciting to us about the project and that we feel really grateful for is we had the opportunity to workshop the final shooting script with actual rehabilitated offenders who had successfully completed Necro's programs. We met with young and older men and women. They were so giving of their time and their energy towards helping us. They were fantastic. We went through the script with them. We talked through the story. We wanted to portray some of the motivations behind individuals in South Africa making the choices that they do and why they might feel that those are the choices they have to make. One of the most interesting experiences that I had with them um, is we, we got around to the question why does crime in South Africa exist to the extent that it does. And I think the, the comment that was the most powerful for, for us that opened my eyes the most, one of the, the men said is humanity strives for recognition. It doesn't matter what any one individual decides to do with their life but in the end it always comes back to the desire for recognition. We exist and we have needs and we are here. And, and that resonated with everyone else around the table. If I can create anything that touches someone and helps widen an eyes about what it's like to live in a certain context, then I'll be creating something that I think is, is worthwhile. And we're hoping that we can take this story and use it as yet another example of the, of the wealth of content and human achievement that exists in this country.